Hi again. Let's see what we have covered so far, shall we? So we have introduced the Laplace transform. Why? Because I promised you that we can use it to write linear differential equations in the form of simple algebraic equations that will be very easy to manipulate and then we will use these both to determine solutions to these linear differential equations as well as to study the properties of differential equations without even having to solve them. But the thing is that we can write these complex entities, the linear differential equations, as simple algebraic equations. So we get rid of derivatives here. First we introduce the Laplace transform. So for functions in the time domain, we have defined the Laplace transform to be the following function of a complex variable S. Examples are the following. We found the Laplace transform of the constant function equals 1, the Laplace transform of the Heaviside the exponential function, powers, t to the nu, sines and cosines. And we proved all these. We proved them using integration by parts very often, as well as this trick. This trick was very useful to prove these two Laplace transforms using the Laplace transform of the exponential function. And we also used integration by parts, which is this formula over here. It is f prime times g, when we, whenever we integrate from a to b, the product of two functions, one of which is written as a derivative, then we can write this as fg from a to b minus fg prime. So it's like we move the derivative from one function to the other. And we saw that we can use this to facilitate the computations in some of these examples. So we derived these Laplace transforms and then we had a look at a few properties of the Laplace transform. First of all, it is uh, linear. It satisfies these two conditions. So whenever we have a sum of two functions, f plus g, the Laplace is Laplace of f plus Laplace of g, so long, of course, as all these Laplace transforms exist. They might not exist for some uh, s. See, for example, here, Laplace trans transform has a domain. This is something to keep in mind. It is not defined for all complex numbers. It is defined for some complex numbers. We haven't really discussed how to derive this domain more generally or what are the functions that even have a Laplace transform at all. We will get there later. But for now, linearity is one very important property of the Laplace transform. Don't get confused. The second property here suggests that whenever we multiply a function f by a constant c, then we can take this c outside. Whenever we multiply two functions with one another, we cannot do that, of course. So this is absolutely not equal to the Laplace of one, tra of one function times the Laplace of the other function. This, in fact, is very difficult to compute. This is... This can be extremely difficult. And then we introduced this property in the last lecture that we can use to find the Laplace transform of, of course, of delayed functions that start at the t0 and are 0 before that. And of course, we can use that to determine the Laplace transform of functions defined piecewise. So this is what we've done so far. Now we will go through a few, proper, a few further properties of the Laplace trans transform, which are very useful. Now the big question is what is the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function? This is the most important question and perhaps the most important property of the Laplace transform. If, because if we can answer this question, and especially if the answer is simple enough, spoilers, it is simple, then we will be able to take an ODE, a differential equation, and get rid of the derivative by applying the Laplace transform. So if the Laplace transform of a derivative makes the derivative disappear, then we have an ODE, we apply the Laplace transform, and we end up with an algebraic equation. 
But before we derive this formula, let's first do a little warm-up. So our first exercise before we get there. What is the Laplace transform of a function f evaluated at a times t instead of t? It's nothing complicated. We'll simply write the Laplace transform over here and we will take the definition. We have the definition e to the minus s tau and so on. Where the only difference here from the classical definition is that instead of, in place of tau, we have a times tau. How can we make this term look more like uh, a Laplace transform? We can introduce a new variable. For example, a new variable y equals a times tau. And once we do that, our objective will be to get rid of uh, tau and replace it by this new variable y in our integral. In particular, tau, if we solve this for tau, this is y divided by a. And of course, d tau is dy divided by a. So it is very simple. We have the integral of v to the minus s, not tau this time, but y divided by a, dy divided by a. Of course, in order to be able to do that, a must not be zero. a is not allowed to be zero. Okay, And here we have 1 over a over here, which is a constant. We can write this constant outside the integral. Now, this looks very much like uh, the Laplace transform, in, in fact, the Laplace transform of f itself, which is given by the following formula. This is the Laplace transform of f. The only difference we see here is that instead of s over there, we have s divided by a in the uh, exponent here. And this is therefore nothing but the Laplace transform of f evaluated not at s, but at s divided by a. And we have therefore given, we have therefore proven the following property. The Laplace transform of f at a t is equal to 1 over a times the Laplace transform of s divided by a. And sometimes the Laplace transform of f, we can write it, we can denote it by uppercase f for simplicity. So this is 1 over a, f at s divided by a. a is not allowed to be equal to 0. So that was the first exercise to warm up, and you can verify the following as homework. Suppose we know that the sine of t, sine of t has the following Laplace transform. Use this result to show that sine of omega times t is equal to what? Derive sine of omega t using this formula and this property that we just proved. Exercise number two. So Let's continue the warm-up. One more exercise before we state the main result for today. The Laplace transform of a product of two functions can be very difficult to evaluate. However, the Laplace transform of this product is very easy to evaluate. The question is, what is it? And here is the solution. We will use the definition again. We see two exponentials over here. We can combine them. And you can see here that the only difference between this expression and the Laplace transform of f is that instead of s, we have s plus a. And it goes without saying that this is f at s plus a. And this is the result.
And this is the second property we proved today. And here comes now the main theorem, the main property that we will prove today. Let's call it a theorem because it's very important. So this is the main theorem. Suppose that f is differentiable. It has a derivative denoted by f prime. And for some gamma positive, and for all complex numbers s with um, a real part above gamma, this property is satisfied. The limit of uh, the exponential e to the minus st times ft as t goes to infinity over the real numbers is equal to zero. Then the following holds, and it holds for all complex numbers with a real part above gamma. The proof is surprisingly simple. Actually, if we write this out, using the definition as we did in the previous two exercises, it will, the result will, will come up. So let's write the Laplace transform of f prime is of course the integral from zero to infinity e to the minus s tau f prime at tau d tau. And this is now, it's like absolutely clear what we must do, because it is the product of a function with a derivative. Recall that whenever we have an integral like that, we can apply integration by parts. So why don't we apply integration by parts over here? And we will clearly have that this is equal to the product of the two functions without the derivative minus the integral. Now the derivative goes here, times f tau d tau. A few details. Actually, the Laplace transform is defined not just from zero to infinity, but from zero plus to infinity. This is to avoid some technicality, some technical complications we might have sometimes. I'm not going to over explain this, but where zero, please replace zero plus and you can find more information about it in uh, the lecture notes. So zero plus, it means that we will rather use the limit as uh, tau goes to zero from the positive numbers. So this is just a technicality, nothing to worry about. We can even keep it zero for simplicity. I just want to state it very, very carefully and very uh, correctly. So this is now this part first. I will write it in blue. This limit as tau goes to infinity minus So this thing is this difference, but look now, for all s with the real part above gamma, above some constant gamma, it is mentioned in the theorem that this is equal to zero. And then this limit, e to the minus st as t goes to zero, we know that this goes to one, and this whole thing becomes f at zero plus the limit of, of function f as tau goes to zero from the positive numbers. And then minus, and we have this integral over here, from zero to infinity, and if we differentiate e to the minus s tau with respect to tau, we have minus s e to the minus s tau, minus with another minus they both become plus. 
S is a constant, does not depend on tau, so we can move it outside the integral. And the rest that remains inside is clearly the Laplace transform of our function f at s. And this is exactly this expression over here. And this is the end of the proof. In a couple of lines, we, we have proven the most important result regarding the Laplace transform. Let's use this result now. Here is a very interesting example. Let's take uh, an actual system. We have a mass m. We apply a force, let's call it u, and this is our control action. We, are, we have the authority to change that u in time. Let x be the displacement of the spring from its natural length, from its rest position. And f spring, we know that is equal to minus kx. And m is the mass of the object. Then we have that... And we know how to write that in a state space representation. And this pair of equations is the state space representation of our system. Now, if I apply the Laplace transform on both sides of both equations, then from the first equation, I will have m times the Laplace of x2 dot. And then from the second equation I have, now for simplicity, let's give these Laplace transforms names. So u uppercase of s is the Laplace of u, x uppercase 1 is the Laplace of x1, and x2 uppercase is the Laplace of x2. Then equation number one produces the following, m times, what is the Laplace of a derivative? It is s times x2 minus x2 at zero plus is equal to u minus kx1. And this is an equation which is algebraic. It doesn't have any derivatives here. There are no derivatives. So it is, let me write it very clearly. It is a function of x2, x1 and u. This is a constant term. And this is not a differential equation. It is a simple algebraic equation. Do you want to solve for x2? You can do it very easily. Move that onto the right hand side. Do you want to solve for x1? Again, this is very easy. So that's the first equation. And the second equation from equation number two, we have as x1 minus x1 and zero plus is equal to x2. An even simpler equation. So this is what, this is how we started the whole discussion about the Laplace transform, that we will be able to take a physical dynamical system, derive some differential equations, check if they are linear or non-linear. In this case, they are linear. Well, uh, yeah, they are linear. Then we can uh, apply the Laplace transform and from the Laplace transform, we derive algebraic equations. Algebraic equations, which involve the Laplace transforms of the input variables and the state variables of the system. What can we do now with these equations? One thing we can do is we can solve them, whatever this means, but we can obtain solutions of the original dynamical system and we can use them to study the properties of the dynamical system, whatever this means. Now for 
uh, to figure out what this means. That's what the rest of the course is about. So we're now entering into the heart, into the core of control systems theory. And the Laplace transform will play an absolutely central role. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>